Glory Divine World Ministries is a place to call home. Come and allow God to unleash your potential, purpose, and destiny. The way, the truth, and the life, and nobody comes to the Father except through Him and through the blood of Jesus. Because of His unconditional love, hallelujah, He sent His only begotten Son, and that is Jesus Christ, to die so He can reconcile Himself to you. you to come and be a part of our glory divine family you never choose jesus he chose you stay tuned for today's life-changing sermon by apostle ryan suknenin let's get into the word of god i'm starting a new series today tell your neighbor no turning back amen tell the other neighbor on the other side i'm not a quitter in the mighty name of jesus now let's turn to the word of god galatians chapter 4 verse 8 to 11 Galatians chapter 4 verse 8 to 11 but then indeed when you did not know God you served those which by nature are not gods so when you did not know gods you serve those which by nature are not gods but now after you have known God say I know God hallelujah or rather are known by God say I am known by God how is it that you turn again to the weak and beggarly elements to which you desire again to be in bondage you observe days and months and seasons and years I am afraid for you lest I have labored for you in vain hallelujah no turning back part one hallelujah now in today's life hallelujah jesus himself said himself said that in this life you will have tribulation but be of good cheer i have overcome so you will overcome many of you that are seated here are faced with obstacles in life hallelujah some of us are facing it right now it seems difficult to move forward hallelujah some of you are in a helpless situation or a hopeless situation and you want to give up hallelujah you feel rather i turn back hallelujah i rather go back from where i came than pushing forward because it feels difficult to push forward hallelujah you have tried to move forward in life amen in your career in your marriage in your studies in your business hallelujah things have become harder not easier every day is a struggle hallelujah amen you have no more fight in you your strength is weak right now hallelujah you want to give up and give in to the pressure but I'm here to tell you, hallelujah, don't turn back and don't give in because your victory is almost there, hallelujah. Let's give the Lord a hand, amen. So if the struggle is too heavy to bear, I'm here to tell you that Jesus is about to step in into your life and he's going to turn the impossibility into possibility. Hallelujah. Just because you are here in the presence of God, it shows it is the Holy Spirit that brought you under this anointing service. Hallelujah. And I'm here to tell you the anointing destroys yoke. Hallelujah. So, our text that I read in Galatians chapter 4 verse 8 to 11 gives us some hope. Amen. The Galatians also, hallelujah, was in a similar situation. They wanted to back off. They wanted to turn back. Hallelujah. Amen. The Galatians were in a very tough situation and they couldn't move forward. And moving forward was more difficult. Hallelujah. And it was easier for them to turn back and go back into the old ways. Hallelujah. So they were turning back to familiar things 
and easy things. They did that before there was no resistance. I'd rather go back into my bondage. It's more easier to go backwards than forwards because in order to push forward, I have to discipline myself. I have to train myself and I have to give up some stuff and it's a bit too difficult for me. I'd rather go back to my own life and live a life of average and mediocre and inferior hallelujah than rather going forward and pushing forward tell your neighbor no turning back hallelujah no turning back in the mighty name of Jesus so Paul says in Galatians 4 verse 10 are you with me church Paul says in Galatians 4 verse 10, you observe days and months and seasons and years and I am afraid for you lest I have labored for you in vain. Hallelujah. And you know Paul, he was in prison. Paul was uh, shipwrecked and he was beaten more than Jesus with the stripes. And Paul went all against the laws and, 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 and the rulers of the day just to get the gospel out because he said in the book of Acts that I'm compelled to preach the gospel I cannot stay away from this gospel hallelujah because I'm mandated and I'm compelled to give the good news to the dying generation hallelujah and Paul is saying I, I, I think my labor has been in vain because you are going back to bondage and you are turning back and it disturbs me hallelujah and I as your apostle uh, this morning uh, and as I bring the word of God day in and Sunday and Tuesday and Friday uh, and I and I pray hallelujah that my labor is not in vain that the word of God is falling on good grounds uh, that it will bear much fruit hallelujah so you will not turn back uh, but you will push forward uh, say I'm pushing forward hallelujah in the mighty name of Jesus. So Paul feels that his labor was in vain. The Galatians returned to the pre-conversion pagan practices. Hallelujah. They, they moved away from Christ to their old ways. They turned back. Hallelujah. To the idolatrous, adulterous practices. Hallelujah. Of the old life. They once again tangled themselves with religion and the body bondage of rituals and they knew Christ hallelujah they knew the love of Christ they experienced the power of God and Paul is telling them now you have gone back into bondage hallelujah ye first no amen leister moi Galatians chapter 4 verse 9 Galatians chapter 4 verse 9 but now after you have known God Hallelujah. Say, I know God. Amen. Or rather, are known by God. God knows you by name. Hallelujah. You belong to the family of God. You are adopted in the family of God. The mercy and the grace and the forgiveness of God is upon you. Hallelujah. You are joined here in Christ, ruling and reigning. Hallelujah. You have authority and power and dominionship. Hallelujah. The spirit of the living God is living inside of you hallelujah you are known by God and you know God hallelujah in the mighty name of Jesus uh, how is it that you turn again to the weak and beggarly elements hallelujah to which you desire again to be in chains to which you desire again to be in bondage hallelujah Amen. And Paul is asking the Galatian church. Hallelujah. 
So Apostle Paul is disturbed and is concerned. Hallelujah. Amen. It is like the same scenario about the children of God when they came out of Egypt. They wanted to stone the leader. They wanted to stone Moses. Hallelujah. And get back into their own life. Turn back into slavery and oppression and bondage. And this morning I pray if any person right now now is in the brink of turning back uh, that you will decide right now to push forward uh, and I cancel that mentality I cancel that decision in the mighty name of Jesus uh, no matter how tough it is uh, no matter how much of resistance uh, your breakthrough is ahead of you and not behind you you got to move forward uh, you got to push forward uh, you got to persevere forward uh, no matter what comes your way. You have the power of God inside of you. Greater is he that is inside of you than he that is in the world. You gotta move forward. You gotta push forward. You will make it. You will pass that metric. You will qualify and get a degree. You will get that promotion. You will make a man and a woman about yourself, of yourself. You will get that bursary. You must not take no for an answer. Say amen. In Jesus name. Numbers 13 verse 33. There we saw the giants. The descendants of Anak came from the giants and we were like grasshoppers in our own sight. So we were in their sight. Yet the spies brought negative report. Hallelujah. This challenge made the people hopeless to move forward because they see giants and in their own eyes they limited themselves. They made themselves average. They looked at themselves as imperial. They looked at themselves as no Nobody's. Hallelujah. And I'm here to pronounce. It's not about how you see yourself. It's about how God sees you. And God says that you are wonderfully and beautifully and marvelously created in his image. Hallelujah. You are more than a conqueror in Christ. Hallelujah. They insisted on a replacement of Moses to lead them back to Egypt. God gave them a leader. Hallelujah. But now because of hopelessness, because of obstacles, because of hindrances, because of fence, because of difficulties, because of ceilings, because of limitations, now they feel that the limitations and the hurdles and the obstacles and the difficulties is greater than the God that took them out of Egypt is much more greater than the leader that God chose to lead them so they decided to choose another leader and go back to slavery and I cancel every slavery mentality in Jesus name you are not called to go backwards you are not called to go backwards. You are called to move forward. The only time I know you go backward in 1983 when we were in the streets. Hallelujah. When breakdance just came about. We had radios and we just go backwards hallelujah but not now we go forward we march on we are fence breakers we are hurdle jumpers we leap over ceilings the ceiling of yesterday i'm walking on it today shout no more limitations come on on this side shout no more limitations in the mighty name of jesus we are more than conquerors we are more than conquerors never give up Never quit because Jesus never quit on you. Numbers 14. Numbers 14, 2 to 4. And all the children of Israel complained. What? Again loud. What? Complained against Moses and Aaron. And the whole congregation said to them, If only we had died in the land of Egypt 
Oh, if only we had died in this wilderness, why has the Lord brought us to this land to fall by the sword that our wives and children should come become victims? Would it not be better for us to return to Egypt? So they said to one another, let us select a leader and return to Egypt. Hallelujah. Sometimes God places a leader in your life. God places an apostle in your life. And the apostle provokes you, brother. Hallelujah. And sometimes we feel, no, 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 we've got to move away from this leader because this leader is making us uncomfortable. God's ways will never make you comfortable. Because God's ways, will, plan, purpose will always take you out of your comfort zone and lead you into destiny. Hallelujah. Amen. So let us choose another leader. Hallelujah. That can take us back to slavery. And that's what happened to many people today. God's people. Hallelujah. When God places an attachment in your life. The devil detaches that attachment. And attaches you to the wrong people. We leave the church. We go somewhere else. Because we want to go back into bondage. Hallelujah. Tell your neighbor no turning back. If God has planted me here, I am planted, I'm rooted and grounded. Hallelujah. Because this is where God will shape me. God will make me. God will mold me. And God will take me to my purpose. In Jesus name. Don't choose another leader. And go back to Egypt. Hallelujah. And the children of Israel did what? Complained. The children of Israel complained. Hallelujah. Complaining can be referred to griping, grumbling, whining, murmuring. Hallelujah. The dictionary defined it as an expression of unhappiness, dissatisfaction, or discontent. Complaining is the outward expression of an inward dissatisfaction. Have you got brothers and sisters that got an inward dissatisfaction? It has a tendency to come out of the mouth. Hallelujah. Complaining, 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 murmuring, murmuring. It's not because something is wrong with someone else. It is because they are discontent and dissatisfied because they want to choose another leader. Hallelujah. They are not getting their own way in what they want to do. That is why they got discontent. So complaining is the fruit of dissatisfaction. Whoever complains, know that something is inside. There's some cocos inside and you need, hallelujah, to spray it out by the spirit of the living God. They need healing and they need counseling, hallelujah, in Jesus' name. So, let's read Numbers 11 verse 1. Tell your neighbor, complaining has consequences. Again, tell your neighbor, complaining has consequences in Jesus' name. Numbers 11 verse 1. Hallelujah. Now when the people complained, it displeased the Lord. What? When the people complained, it displeased the Lord because God is waiting for something to come out of the mount that will praise him. That pleases the Lord. But when complaining comes out, it displeases the Lord. Hallelujah. Now when the people complained, it displeased the Lord. For the Lord heard it. Say the Lord heard it. He heard it. Hallelujah. And his anger was aroused. Of what? Because of complaining. Hallelujah. Tell your neighbor. Please don't be a complainer. Stop complaining. Hallelujah. And start praising. No matter how difficult it is. Start praising. Praising will give you solution. Complaining, no. 
So now when the people complained, it displeased the Lord, for the Lord heard it and his anger was aroused. So the fire of the Lord burned among them and consumed some in the outskirts of the camp. Hallelujah. Even consume some in the outskirts of the camp. The Lord always considers complain as an act of unbelief towards him. If I am in a problem and I face difficult situation and I start complaining, it shows that I have disbelief, unbelief and doubt in an almighty God that God can come out for me. Hallelujah. The children of Israel complained about nearly everything. Their circumstances, hallelujah, the type of food they're getting, and even the leader. Do you get people like that that just complain, oh, the weather is bad, oh, this is bad, oh, that is bad, oh, this is bad. Just complain, 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 complain. This brother took my seat. That brother took my parking. Oh, I came, nobody greeted me, hallelujah. Oh, the church never visited me, hallelujah. Come Complain, but you are not in the church for six months. Oh, I needed counseling and the pastor never counseled me. If you were in the service today, you would have got healed and you don't need counseling. That is why God has services. Let me give you, let me shock you. Let me shock you with this. And whatever I preach is downloaded from heaven. The church must never be need driven. If I am need driven, I'll run 24 hours for people's need all over. Everybody call me, I'll be running. And the leaders will only be running after people's needs. The church must be solution driven. It's okay for somebody who got 10 people in a garage or 20 people in, a, in a, a, a school classroom to visit them every two weeks. But what when we got thousands of people? That is why God said, do not forsake the gathering of the saints. Encourage, exhort one in the gathering. So if somebody has a need, they must come to the hospital of God. Yeah. Do you ever see when somebody's in need, you call the doctors to come to you? You go to the hospital because the hospital has everything to operate you and to give you so you are healed. That is the church. It is a spiritual hospital. If you have a need, this is the place to come so you will be healed in Jesus name. The church needs to get back. Hallelujah to the Bible. In the mighty name of Jesus. Because there's power inside the church. There's power when people gather together. The Holy Ghost is here. The presence of the Holy Spirit is here. The glory of God is here. The anointing is here. So when you come here, you are sick, you get healed. In Jesus' name. So, the children of Israel complained about nearly everything and God was totally displeased hallelujah do you know why because they did not have a heart of thankfulness they did not have a heart of gratitude that God chose a leader by the name of Moses for 400 years they have been suppressed and under slavery and bondage they were under task masters and they were laboring hallelujah amen and they were in ration and God miraculously took them out of oppression chose a leader hallelujah and marched 
marching them into a promised land and yeah they were displeased when even God gave them meat and God gave them their clothes never even go, uh, go small and God gave them an air conditioner hallelujah meaning the cloud gave them an air conditioner and then the fire in the night gave them a heater God provided so well for them but they had a heart of ingratitude and it displeased the Lord why because they never had a heart of thankfulness and today God is talking to you hallelujah are you waiting for God to do something so huge then you'll thank him or can you come and thank him for the very legs you have for the very hands you have, for the eyes that can see, the ears can, that can hear, for a roof over your head. Hallelujah. You thank him for the little, that he will bless you with the much, then you will have more testimonies. The Bible says if you are faithful in the least, you will add much. Don't wait for the much before you are faithful. In Jesus' mighty name. So God provided them with clothes, food, heater, air conditioner, even a great leader, hallelujah. But God was displeased because they refused to trust him. They rather said, let us choose for us a leader outside of God. Automatically, if they choose a leader, it is not God appointed. So they are saying, go, our way will be better than God's way, hallelujah. Am I talking to you? Amen. Am I talking to you this morning? Hallelujah. So they were distrusting, mistrusting God to protect them and to provide for them and to direct them into the land that God promised them. Hallelujah. So if you and I complain, it really becomes an accusation against the Lord. It means that you don't trust him. No matter how difficult the situation is, don't complain. I said, no matter how difficult the situation is, don't complain. I know we are humans. We have a tendency to get emotional. Hallelujah. We have a tendency to speak our mind. But chup still. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. And from today, if you stop complaining and praising the Lord, you'll see how your situation will change. Let's give the Lord a hand. Hallelujah. In the mighty name of Jesus. No matter what comes your way, hallelujah. No matter who ill treats you, mistreats you, hallelujah. Amen. Don't allow them to get, uh, hallelujah, the better of you. He who angers you, controls you, hallelujah. Amen. He who gets you emotionally up, frustrates you, hallelujah. Don't give them an opportunity to control you, hallelujah. In the mighty name of Jesus, allow the peace of God to control you. No matter how vulgar they can be, no matter how arrogant they can be, you just tell them, I release you in the hands of God. You can say whatever you are, it doesn't matter because I know who I am in the name of Jesus. You just waste your breath. I commit you in the hands of Jesus. And you'll see how quickly his wonder, hallelujah, amen, how quickly it will become two. Mark your one, two. So, Exodus 16, verse 8. Exodus 16, verse 8. Also Moses said, this shall be seen when the Lord gives you meat to eat in the evening and in the morning bread to the full. For the Lord hears, the Lord hears your complaints which you have made against him. And what are we? Your complaints are not against us, but against the Lord. Therefore church, complaining is unbelief in God's word. If you come to church, we have come to learn the truth in this church. Hallelujah. This church is a word-based church. Hallelujah. And I believe it is a word. Our sister testifies. Amen. Uh, she didn't tell her full testimony. When she came here, she was on the verge of committing suicide. Hallelujah. Amen. She was, when I first counseled her last year, she was right down, right down, 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 down. Hallelujah. And today she's restored. Yeah. 
she was going for professional counseling did not help her hallelujah what changed her life is the word of god the word of god hallelujah if you preach the word of god it is the truth that sets you free no hanky panky hallelujah no some type of program to entertain people and to keep people we preach the word and look at our eight o'clock service back to capacity let's give the lord a hand it is the word tell your neighbor it is the word in jesus name never compromise with the word hallelujah so your complaints are not against us but against the lord the people complained against moses hallelujah but god says that they complained against him be careful how you complain in the church be careful how you complain against leadership against the man of god i'm not exalting myself i'm but I'm, i know i'm chosen by god hallelujah be careful because if you complain against me you're complaining against god because god has set me here hallelujah so if anybody seated here hallelujah has done that i pray the lord forgive you because your doors must not be closed in the mighty name of jesus so we need to know how protocols of god works Romans 8 verse 28 the Bible says and we know that all things work together for the good of those who love God to those who are called according to his purpose if these people that God led out of oppression if they just kept quiet and believed in God that 40 year journey in three weeks they could have been in the destiny into the promised land but because of complaining it took 40 years 40 years fear the yara because of complaining this mouth here this mouth take me more this mouth dictates your tomorrow destines your destiny hallelujah is by a by a belangrik hallelujah so complaining is the breeding ground for demons complaining is the breeding ground for demons because complaining is not the fruit of the spirit if it's not the fruit of the spirit is the fruit of someone else are you listening to me hallelujah i'm here to build families i'm here to build people up this year hallelujah that when you go out and you complain come out i pray you'll see bishop's face there <laughs> because you are in charge god has put you the caretaker of your body and caretaker of your future hallelujah in the mighty name of jesus uh, amen so complaining is an atmosphere that invokes demons to flourish if your house is full of complaining it's a breeding ground and it is an atmosphere that invokes demon and when you walk into a house where there's full of bickering and complaining you feel that heaviness and the iciness sometimes i go to pray for some people hallelujah and i'm just come out from a blessed house it was so easy and you walk in there you feel like the whole weight of the world because the atmosphere is breathing with demons hallelujah tell your neighbor stop complaining no matter how difficult it is stop complaining in the mighty name of jesus hallelujah first corinthians and this will shock you hallelujah it will really shock you this morning first corinthians chapter 10 verse 10 first corinthians chapter 10 verse 10 nor complain as some of them also complain and were destroyed by the destroyer 
Some of them complained and were destroyed by the destroyer. And who's the destroyer? John 10, 10 the Bible say the destroyer comes to steal, to kill, to devour. Hallelujah. And complain attracts them, feeds them. Hallelujah. Invokes them. Hallelujah. Welcomes them into your house, into your life, into your family. Hallelujah. Some of you cannot work for five minutes without complaining about your boss. Or about somebody. Hallelujah. About somebody. Some of you are ENCA every morning. And somebody, some people likes it, hallelujah. What is the fresh news for this morning? Early morning, you got a working here, computer here, computer, you know what happened there, and, and, and that house, and, and that house, 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 and that one's husband, and that one's wife, and that pastor, and this one, and that, no! This is me, your basic gate. You're supposed to praise God. Hallelujah. That's why by 12 o'clock your day is messed up. You start in the morning all happy bringing other people's news. By 11 o'clock, 12, something happens and your day is buggered up. Because you invited some stuff. What you sow, you shall reap. And whatever you reap is not what you sow. You reap more than what you sow. Hallelujah. So church, you think people complain because they have problems? No. Let me tell you something else. The people have problems because they complain. It's the other way around. They have problems because they complain. Because the more complain, the devil will give you more things to complain. That's his job. Hallelujah. So every day you'll have fresh stories to complain. So don't become bitter and resort to complaining church. Hallelujah. Am I talking to you? You can turn your life around. I was also a complainer a couple of years, maybe 25 years ago. This complain, that complain, that complain, that complain. Hallelujah. Nowadays I don't complain. I can, I, I can face the greatest challenge. I don't allow it to come out. Hallelujah. Because I know the disastrous results and consequences. I'd rather go in my room and pray to God. Hallelujah. And I come out calm after that. Just take any anger. Any frustration. In your life takes about three minutes to cool down. So take the three minutes and run in your prayer closet. Before you blow your top off. And let the volcano erupt. And spread his lava over everybody. Hallelujah. Cool it down. By prayer. In the mighty name of Jesus. Hallelujah. So. When you don't complain and don't gossip. The enemy will not have weapons to use against you. As soon as you open your mouth and complain and gossip. The enemy uses that against you. And that is why most of us are so, we are 30 years, we look like 50. A year is old. The burdens. That's why I'm going to be 53 years in, in this month. Hallelujah. I always say, God, give me the antidote to stay young. And the way to stay young, hallelujah, and good, yes, you must exercise, but don't complain. Don't have unforgiveness, hallelujah, because those are the things that show in your body. You go through torture inside, hallelujah, amen. And God has not created you to be that. God wants when your mouth open, you must be a blessing. No matter how pressurized you are, when your mouth opens, you must be a channel of blessing. Hallelujah. People will love to be around you. In the mighty name of Jesus. Hallelujah. First Thessalonians. What is the alternative for complaining? And I'm closing. 
What is the alternative for complaining? First Thessalonians five sixteen. Rejoice always. What? Rejoice always, not only on a Sunday. Not only when you good, got good news. Not when your husband buy your flowers. Hallelujah. Or your wife cook a nice meal for you. Then you're rejoicing. I got a good wife. All the six days is not good. <laughs> rejoice always. Tell your neighbor, rejoice always. And once you start rejoicing, the very demons that caused you to become a bitter person will find that you are not feeding them. After a while, they will leave you. And then every day you will live a life of rejoicing. Because if you don't rejoice, you will only rejoice for two days and the next seven to four days, you back down. The problem is not with God. The problem is not with the people. The problem is with you. Sometimes we look at our brother and our sister and say they are the problem. The biggest problem. If you want to find the culprit. Go look in the mirror. Look in the mirror you'll find the culprit. And when you see that then talk to that person. And say, you are the one that destroying my life. From today, I'm going to deal with you. You will not make me to complain anymore. Paul, uh, I mean, uh, Paul spoke to himself and encouraged himself. You are three in one. Soul, spirit and body. Hallelujah. Your spirit man can talk. You're three in one. You're a trinity also. You're a spirit man that possesses a soul that lives in a body. That is why your spirit can become so powerful. Hallelujah. It depends how you feed it. So you can talk to yourself. Tell your neighbor, talk to yourself. In Jesus' name. Now don't walk in the street. and um, <laughs> People will think you. Find some time. Get into your closet. Find a mirror. And talk to that person. In Jesus' mighty name. Hallelujah. So church, when the way forward is hard. Five minutes. You are tempted to turn back. Hallelujah. When the way forward is difficult, it forces you to live by faith and not by sight. Hallelujah. And if you don't live by faith, you will automatically turn back and go to the easy route. Oh, the good old days. You know, I remember that time I was sitting in the bar. The beers was there. I got a boiled egg there, some nuts there. I got some salt there. I'm chewing. I'm hitting my dop. Hey, it was left. No, it was not liquor. You were wasting valuable time. Hallelujah. Yes, you were enjoying yourself, but you were going nowhere slowly by a static. Hallelujah. So, wasted years. You enjoyed yourself for two hours there. Then you come home. Hallelujah. And your wife is waiting there. Hallelujah. 11 o'clock, 12 o'clock. Amen. The children are one side. Where's daddy? Hallelujah. Amen. Oh, no, 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 no. I supposed to pay rent. But I had one, two beers. Hallelujah. I had ended up with another one. Then another three friends came. And you know what these friends are? Hallelujah. They always come and they say they are broken, disgusted. Hallelujah. And they don't got no money. So I had to buy some drinks and my 2,000 rand just went and I don't even know how it went. You know how it went. And then complaining starts in the house. Hallelujah. Who caused it? You thought you were having good time. Hallelujah. You come home. The home is broken. Consequences. 
Hallelujah. Consequences. Consequences in life. I was there. 29 years ago, I was there and I know it. I speak from practical experience. Hallelujah. And I overdid it. I start on Friday. I end up on Sunday. And sometimes not even Sunday, I don't come home. But the Lord has set me free and I can stand here and say that those were wasted years. Wasted years. Hallelujah. And the 29 years that I changed my life, I can see everything that the Lord has blessed me with. Hallelujah. Everything. And I pray that today is a day, hallelujah, where the Lord will touch you, hallelujah, that your whole life will be turned around and you will not live a selfish life anymore, hallelujah, but you will live a life pleasing unto God and if you fail and falter, the grace of God will forgive you, lift you up, hold his garment, never let go, hallelujah, amen, in Jesus' mighty name. So, Paul is frustrated now. Paul is frustrated. Hallelujah. This is what Paul says to the Galatians. What you are doing is ridiculous. Belakrik. What? Belaklik. Ridiculous. Belaklik. It's ridiculous. Hallelujah. Paul says turning back is not the way forward. How can you turn back and go back to bondage and you think you're going forward? Tells the Galatians. Is there anybody that turned back here? Don't lift your hands up. No, my brother. No, my sister. You're still going to live in the next 10 years. Your decision today will determine how you will live in the next 10 years. Your own car, your own house. With children, a loving father, you can be a loving mother. Hallelujah. Amen. You decide today and God will back you up. Heaven will back you up. The resource of God will back you up. Because God does not give empty promises. Amen. No turning back. No turning back. Turning back. Hallelujah. Turning back leads you back to greater bondage. Hallelujah. And slavery. To what you were held captive once, you go back there, hallelujah. There is always a pull to get back to the old ways, uh, hallelujah. When you make up your mind to go forward, uh, hallelujah, you'll be hearing those voices, come back, come back, come, come back. Every time you make a decision to turn away from something, you'll hear that voice, come, come, come. Come back, come back, come back. Come back. Yes, the devil will tempt you. Hallelujah. The devil will tempt you. But you got to, James 4, 7 say, resist him. You don't resist the devil only. You resist him in the word. You resist him in Christ. And then he will flee. Allow God to fight your battle. So when the bully comes, you tell the bully, don't wait. Oh, wait till I call my daddy. Hallelujah. Amen. And my daddy will mess your daddy up. Resist him in the faith. Resist him. By running into the house of God. Resist him by coming to the altar. Resist him by calling a, a brother that is strong in the Lord. Brother, I'm weak. I'm feeling tempted. I hear that voice saying to me, come, 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 come. Can you help me? Can you pray with me? Hallelujah. It only lasts for about three minutes. Even cigarettes, if you want to give it up. That urge is only heavy for about three minutes. The urge is only heavy for about three minutes. And if you can get over the three minutes, it's subsides. So what am I talking to you? You can do it. Say, I can do it. Say, I can do it. In the mighty. And as I close, when the way forward becomes difficult, hallelujah, 
you know that you are the brink of a miracle. You are the brink of victory because there's resistance. You are about to break the limitation that has been placed in years in front of you. That is why it becomes difficult. And if you continue and push on without turning back, you will skip over. Hallelujah. And when you skip over, there lies your blessing. Let's stand in the presence of God. Hallelujah. This is Glory Divine Communications Network News, reporting to you live. I am Kayla Rosenberg. And I am Odell David. Here we gather relevant information on news, events, projects, and much more. Glory Divine Communication Network News endeavors to be in the forefront of all happenings and to be dynamic in all that we do through the spirit of excellence. We interrupt this program to bring you breaking news. The biggest news this far is that Glory Divine has moved to 8 Link Road, Lang Lachta. The premises is bigger, better and has great top class facilities. The people who have visited the church cannot stop bragging about their experience. Research shows that Glory Divine World Ministries has many exciting events that take place daily and that they are a church with a difference. The Bible School, which is called Gloria Divine Bible Academy, internationally recognized and affiliated with Team Impact University. Reports reveal that approximately 100 students enrolling yearly. Sources reveal that a powerful service takes place every Tuesday called Divine Connection. The word on the street is that young people are flocking to the church every Friday. They call themselves Girl getting over average life. Powerful intercessors meet every Friday to make war through prayer. Called DART, Divine Attack Revolution Team. News is going around that the worship team called Gloria Divine Inspiration is a dynamic team that will inspire and elevate your worship experience to supernatural proportions. We hear that the church is having two services, one at 8 a.m. and one at 10 a.m. to cater for the influx of the crowd. Sources reveal that the word preached is undiluted, uncompromised and the services are conducted with professional excellence. We also hear that they do not run after miracles. However, signs, wonders and miracles is a normal occurrence in the services. We hear of the visionary of Glory Divine World Ministries, Apostle Ryan, has been awarded with many prestigious awards. Some of them are the Legacy of the Leaders Award several times, winner of the Parable Magazine of the Month Award and various others. Sources also tell us that Apostle Ryan is a biblical and business scholar who has attained numerous international qualifications and is passionate to pass it on to the community. We hear that 45 of his leaders has graduated with a bachelor's degree in theology. He is a dynamic preacher and operates in the five-fold office. His sermons are practical, life-transforming and powerful. Sources tell us that the visionary is passionate about uplifting people and the church is involved in many social upliftment programs such as feeding the poor, handing out grocery parcels, blanket and clothing drives. He is also a familiar face on TV, radio and print media. Sunday observations shows that traffic is affected because of the crowds that queue to get to Glory Divine World Ministries. It is alleged that Glory Divine World Ministries is a place to call home. This is Odell David and Kayla Rosenberg.
Signing out from GDCNN. Goodbye and God bless.